Hello students and welcome to the lecture on chapter 10. In chapter 10 we're going to be talking about uh, capital budgeting which is planning for and preparing budgets for uh, long-term assets so property, plant, and equipment as you learned in um, MBA 510. So <clears throat> um, oftentimes uh, companies have to make choices about what kinds of investments to invest in. So they may have a choice of different types of equipment, for example. Um, no company has the funds to purchase all of the fixed assets that they want to purchase. So they have to make a choice. <clears throat> the process of capital budgeting is um, how to select the best choice between alternatives. One of the key concepts in this chapter, <clears throat> and this is going to be really difficult, frankly, to do online because I can't sit with you and walk you through the use of the financial calculator to calculate the time value of money in a face-to-face uh, -face class. Uh, there would be a session on using the financial calculator for an online class because I can't do that. I have um, YouTube videos that will help you do that, and you can find that on eCollege. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> capital budgeting involves making a large commitment of money up front normally um, and potential returns in future years. There's an opportunity cost. Uh, just define that term now. The opportunity cost is a um, cost, a benefit that you're giving up because you're choosing another alternative. Okay, so an opportunity cost is something given up. Um, <clears throat> in many of the techniques that we're going to be using in capital budgeting, we're going to be looking at cash inflows, money coming in, and cash outflows, money going out. So cash inflows is the benefits that are going to accrue or result from acquiring a capital project. Whether it's increased revenues, that's money coming in, or reduced costs, that also is money coming in because less money is going out. And then again, the time value of money concept is very important. Time value of money is Cash received today is worth more than the same amount received in the future. And the further in the future it goes, the more that money today is worth. And that's called the present value. And we'll, we'll uh, <clears throat> talk a little bit about that. And you will be expected to use your financial calculators to compute present values. Okay, so... <clears throat> Here's the typical cash outflows, so money going out for a capital budgeting problem. The initial investment, so the purchase of equipment or some other capital assets. Then there's ongoing repairs and maintenance throughout the life of the asset. Increased operating costs to operate the equipment. And then working capital is similar to this internal operating cost in that this is the money you need to operate the machine or equipment or whatever the asset is. As far as inflows, <clears throat> money coming in, so increased revenues results in an inflow. Reduced operating costs, so if you're reducing expenses, that's an up cash inflow. Salvage value, if you're going to get salvage value at the end of the life of the asset, that's going to be money coming in in the future. Okay, and again, that results in released working capital. So you've got extra cash then to use for other things. <clears throat> Here's some terminology um, that we will be looking at in this chapter. So out-of-pocket costs are future cash outflows. So these are, this is funds, cash, that are going to have to be expended if you choose a certain alternative. 
If you don't choose that alternative, there won't be any cash going out. On the other hand, sunk costs are past cash flows, money you've already spent. So <clears throat> um, because it's money you already spent, you can't avoid that money because you've already spent it. So regardless of the decision that you make, you've already spent the money and we'll see how that um, affects the decisions as we go along. The cost of capital, um, if you've taken the finance course, you know that that's the um, uh, interest rate or the rate of acquiring funds, whether it's through borrowings, whether it's through um, issuing stock, you know, it's how much does it cost you to get funds. Okay, we'll look at all of these concepts in a little while. There's a special uh, thing you have to be aware of, depreciation. Depreciation is an expense, as you learned in MBA 510, but it's not a cash outflow. Okay? Depreciation itself does not affect cash flow. It's only on paper, no cash is exchanged. Okay, so again, we'll see how that affects our, our calculations as we go through this. Okay, <clears throat> the first method that we're gonna use to determine um, capital, alternative capital investments or capital projects is the payback period. Payback period is relatively simple. It's how long will it take us to get our money back? Okay, so a really simple example is if we spend a million dollars and if we get that, that million dollar piece of equipment, for example, generates $200,000 of cash flow inflows every year. Well, if it, we pay out a million dollars today, we get back $200,000 a year, it will take us five years to get our money back. That's the payback period. So it's the initial cash outlay, how much cash we're paying out, divided by the cash that's coming in on an annual basis. Okay, so five years. So you don't, this is a very simple method. You don't have to worry about the time value of money. Um, all you do is just take whatever you pay out, divide it by how much is gonna come in every year. Okay, so again, we ignore time value of money. <clears throat> um, in choosing alternative investments, we choose the one that has the shortest payback period under this method. So which method will allow us to get our money back the fastest? That's basically what the payback period is. Okay, so this eatery wants to install a seafood bar. This seafood bar is gonna cost $150,000, has a 10 year life. So um, this seafood bar they figure can generate hundred, uh, sorry, $30,000 of cash inflows a year. Notice it says net annual inflows because there's gonna be expenses related to operating the seafood bar, but there'll also be cash coming in from sales. So the net or the difference between what comes in and what goes out is this $30,000 net annual cash inflow, okay? So <clears throat> this restaurant has an internal goal of requiring six years or less as a payback period for all the investments that it does. So it wants to get back its money, the investment within six years. Okay? So if it's within six years, they'll do the investment. If it takes longer than six years for the payback, then they won't. Okay, so the question is, should they invest in the seafood bar? Oops. So again, the payback period is your initial outlay. $150,000 divided by the <clears throat> annual cash inflows, which was the 30,000 a year. So the payback period is five years. They'll get their money back in five years. So they should invest in the seafood bar because it's less than their standard or their goal of six years for a payback period. Okay. So payback period, very, very simple method, but there are some limitations. It ignores the time value of money. 
So on in this method, a dollar coming in today is worth exactly the same as a dollar coming in 10 years from now. Okay, so it does not take into account the time value of money. And we know that's not true. Okay, a dollar today is worth way more than a dollar 10 years from now because we can take that dollar today and invest it and it's going to grow to more than the dollar 10 years from now. So <clears throat> that's a limitation. Um, it also ignores the time period after the payback period. So in our example, we saw that the payback period was five years. This method ignores what happens in year six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, et cetera. So it doesn't even take into account how long it's going to be after the five years. All that they care about in this method is how long will it take us to get money back? So notice it says unacceptable for projects with long lives where time value of money affects our major. So the longer the life of the asset, the more important the time value of money becomes. And again, this method ignores all of those things because it's a very quick method, quick and easy method of trying to uh, choose between alternative investments. Okay? So again, really easy but not recommended because it's not very accurate. <clears throat> Another method for choosing a project is called the unadjusted rate of return. The unadjusted rate of return is the annual average annual income. So the money that is coming in, so the income that you're making on average every year, divided by the average amount of the investment. Average investment is your beginning balance plus your ending balance divided by two. <clears throat> so example of that, that 30,000 that the seafood uh, bar is going to generate for the restaurant is the annual cash inflow, money coming in. Depreciation is <clears throat> the $150,000 cost 10-year life, and you remember from your financial accounting course, the depreciation annually is the cost minus salvage value divided by the estimated life. So 15,000 is the depreciation. So the annual income is $15,000. Notice in this method, we have to subtract depreciation from the annual cash that's coming in. Okay, so the annual income is the 30,000 cash coming in minus the 15,000 depreciation. The unadjusted rate of return again is the average annual income, the 15,000 divided by the average amount of the investment. So we started the year with no investment. We made this $150,000 investment during the year. So the average is 150 plus zero divided by two, so $75,000. So the unadjusted rate of return is the 15,000 divided by 75,000 or 20%. Okay, so that in other words, this is a, again, quick and easy method to try to figure out about how much are we gonna make if we make this investment. So 20% a year is how much we will get, okay? Is that good or bad, making 20% a year? It all depends on the type of business and the specific company's goals for what they want to return, earn as a return on their investment. <clears throat> this formula here um, is exactly the same thing we did, except they're taking into account the tax effect of the transaction, don't worry about this. This, this is uh, beyond the scope of this course, I think. Um, accounting majors learn this, but you don't have to worry about this. Okay, so don't have to consider taxes. <clears throat> Again, there's some limitations on this method. Again, it in ignores the time value of money. Okay. Um, as you remember, depreciation can be calculated in several ways. So um, the result that you get by using this method is gonna be entirely dependent on what method of depreciation 
values, whether it's straight line, some of the years digits, double declining balance, all those methods that you learned in uh, financial accounting. Um, there's alternative ways of doing that. And then also, it ignores the length of time. So earning 20% a year for five years, that's different than earning 20% a year for 20 years. I'd rather earn 20% a year for 20 years rather than the five year. But again, that it ignores the length of time. Okay. Again, major limitations. But again, this method is used because it's easy. So it's used as a quick guide sort of thing. But again, it's not the most accurate method. <clears throat> so what is a more accurate method? The net present value method is quite commonly used in the business world. Okay. <clears throat> and basically, net present value is the present value of cash inflows, the money coming in, minus the present value of cash outflows, the money going out. Generally, money going out when you purchase an investment happens all at once, right now. It's already present valued. <clears throat> in order to calculate a present value, you need to choose a cost of capital, okay? Because you need to um, use that in the on the financial calculator to calculate present values, okay? So again, whoops, present value of the inflows minus the present value of the outflows gives us net present value. And the rule is if net present value is positive, then do the investment because it results in a higher return than the cost of capital. So again, remember cost of capital was how much does it cost us to get money? So if NPV is positive, that means we'll make more money than it will cost us to acquire the money. If NPV is negative, that means it does not mean you're losing money. It means that you're not going to make your cost of capital. So don't do it. It'll cost us more to acquire the money than the money we can make from the investment. So again, net present value positive, do it. Net present value negative, don't do it. Here's the example of net present value. So this company, um, they've uh, had the chance or the opportunity to parts for a large manufacturer, it's a five-year contract, but they'll have to buy new equipment in order to take this contract. So this new equipment's gonna cost $160,000, have a useful life of five years, and a $5,000 salvage value. So you remember again, salvage value, as you learned in financial accounting, is the what you can receive at the end of the useful life of the equipment. So usually selling it for parts and that kind of a thing. Also in the middle of the life, at the th third year, they'll have to overhaul the equipment at a cost of $30,000. So again, that's an outflow, money going out. The initial requirement is 100,000. So <clears throat> they're gonna have to, um, well, well, we'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, the initial working capital requirements, 100,000. Okay, so here's the uh, details of the contract. Okay, they're gonna get $750,000 revenue from this company, but it's gonna cost $400,000 to, uh, for the materials and the parts for, to make the product that they're gonna be selling to this uh, other company. Um, so the bottom line is they're gonna get $80,000 of cash inflow every year, okay? This company uses a 10% discount rate or cost of capital. Okay, so they want to make at least 10% on all their investments. Okay, and it says ignore income taxes. Okay, now what I'm gonna go through now is gonna be different than what you're going to be doing because <clears throat> 
the uh, textbook uses present value tables, which nobody uses anymore. Everybody uses a financial calculator to calculate present values. Your calculator is much more accurate than the present value tables. So you'll see present value tables at the end of the chapter in appendix. Okay, but don't use the present value tables. You're going to use your financial calculator instead. Okay, so <clears throat> just look at all the cash flows. The equipment, the actual purchase of the equipment, it's done now. $160,000 right now. Right now means it's already present value. That's the value right now. Okay, and if you're spending $100,000, it's already there. So we had to spend 100,000 on working capital, which means these are just operating expenses. These are happening right now. So that again is already present valued. So that's worth negative 100,000 because money's going out. Annual inflows. So we get 80,000 a year for five years. <clears throat> and um, when you review the, the YouTube video on how to do present values, whenever you have a series of payments of equal amounts, like this is 80,000 a year for five years, that's called an annuity, okay? And you will use your financial calculator <clears throat> and I'll touch a little bit on that um, at the end of this uh, lecture. But um, anyway, a, the 80,000 a year for five years at a discount rate of 10%, approximately your number. And I encourage you to redo this table, but rather than using this column for the present value factor from the tables, just calculate the present value on your financial calculator. You're going to get results that are close to these amounts, but not exactly the same as these amounts. Yours will be more accurate, but there, you shouldn't be too far off from these numbers. Okay, so anyway, this is money coming in, so it's a positive. They have to overhaul. So in the third year, they're going to spend $30,000. Okay, so um, whenever you have a one-time payment, <clears throat> okay, that's not an annuity. You'll have to figure out the present value. What is that $30,000 three years from now worth today? So we're calculating the present value. <clears throat> and it, it, as soon as I'm finished this, I'll, I'll give you some hints about using the financial calculator just a little bit. Okay, so working capital, <clears throat> money is gonna, 100,000 is gonna come in every year because of this um, taking the project and using the machine. So 100,000 will come in every year for five years, okay? <clears throat> but that's gonna be, um, sorry, this is, this is a one-time thing at the end of the five years, as well as salvage value. You're gonna get that 5,000 at the end of the five years. Okay, so it's not an annuity or a series of inflows or outflows. This is a one-time deal for both working capital salvage value. Okay, so $100,000 five years from now is worth $62,092 approximately. $5,000 five years from now, that's $3,105. Okay, you add up all the present values of the inflows, the positive numbers, minus the present value of the outflows, the negative numbers, and you get a net present value of 85,921. Okay, again, the rule is if the net present value is positive, do the investment. Net present value negative, don't do it. Since it's positive, then we know we, we should do it because we're gonna earn more than the 10% cost of capital or discount rate. Okay, um, okay, so now you're gonna, let me just tell you a little bit about the use of the financial calculator, but again, it's difficult to do online. So you're gonna have to look at the YouTube videos um, that I'm gonna post 
uh, links to on eCollege. Okay, but for a one-shot deal, okay, like overhaul, working capital, salvage value, the amount you're going to get that or pay that in the future. So on the financial calculator, that's the future value button. Okay, there's five buttons on the financial calculator that you're going to have to use to do present value calculations. And on the uh, HP 12C, which is the financial calculator that I um, told you guys to get from the course syllabus, across from left to right, the top row of the HP 12C calculator, you'll see some buttons. N, I, PV, PMT, and FE. Those are the primary buttons you're going to use. N is the number of years, or it's actually the number of periods, but for purposes of this chapter, it's almost always going to be years. N is so period. I is the interest rate. PV is the present value, the amount it's worth today. The PMT is for the case of like this annual inflow. If you've got a series of uh, payments of the same amount, so this 80,000 a year for five years, this 80,000 is your PMT button on your financial calculator. FV is if you've got a lump sum, so one amount, sometime in the future. So for example, this working capital, you're going to get 100,000 five years from now. That 100,000 represents the future value. Okay, so you've got these five buttons. You need to input three variables in order to calculate a fourth one. Okay, so for example, taking this working capital. Okay, we know we're gonna get $100,000 in five years in the future. So that $100,000, and if you've got your financial calculators out, follow along with me, that $100,000 is the future value. So just input 100,000 and then hit the FV button. Oh yeah, one other thing I should mention when using the financial calculators, you got to make sure you clear the financial calculator every time you use it. When you go through the YouTube videos, you'll see how to do that. But just remember, clear your calculator first before doing any kind of a problem. Okay, so that $100,000 was the future value because you're going to get that in the future. We know that it's going to be five years from now. so. You type five and then N. And then the third variable that we know is the discount rate or the interest rate here, 10%. So on the calculator, you hit one, zero, I. And then we're trying to find the present value. So we just hit the PV button up in the upper right-hand corner. And notice it's uh, 62,092.13. Okay, so ours is um, more exact than the tables there. I mean, it's very close though, but uh, Mars is a little bit more accurate. And it's easier using the financial calculator instead of doing the table thing. So, okay. So again, you have to input three variables in order to calculate a fourth one. And don't worry so much of the uh, sign on the answer, the negative or the positive, okay? <clears throat> if it's money coming in, like working capital here, it's gonna be a positive num um, amount on this analysis here. If it's money going out, like annual, inf uh, sorry, equipment, it's gonna be a negative, okay? Okay, so again, Relative, not relatively, it's really hard to go through financial calculator use on an online class. So again, go through the YouTube videos. You may have to look, uh, review those several times um, in order to know how to use the financial calculator, but that's how we figure out present value 
And the rule again for net present value is the cash inflows, the present value, sorry, of the cash inflows have to be greater than the present value of the cash outflows. Okay, so here's that general rule here. Okay, if it's net present value is positive, accept the project, do it. If it's negative, don't do it. If it's zero, that means do it because you're going to get a return equal to your required rate of return or your discount rate, okay, or your cost of capital. Those are all synonymous terms, by the way. <clears throat> okay, um, as I said, the net present value is widely used in the business world. It's, it's probably one of the two most common um, approaches to determining um, whether to make investments or not. Another method, although not quite as commonly used as net present value, is called the profitability index. So remember in the previous net present value method, we came up with a dollar amount for net present value. We're going to be using the same um, calculations that we did for NPV, net present value, but we're going to uh, come up with an index. So the profitability index is the present value of the net cash inflows divided by present value of the cash outflows. Remember for the net present value method, we subtracted the present value of the cash outflows from the present value of the cash inflows. And this, this method here, profitability index method, we divide the two, okay? <clears throat> and the rule here is, if the index is greater than one, can do the project. If it's less than one, don't do the project. The benefit of using profitability index is it uh, takes into consideration the relative size of the investment. Okay, so you know, like the previous example, eighty-five thousand nine twenty-one NPV. Okay, it makes a difference if the investment is let's say $20 million versus whether the investment in like this one's only 160. Okay, in this NPV method, it really doesn't matter because um, as long as it's positive. But the profitability index is a great way to rank projects, al alternate projects that you have to choose between if they have different initial amounts of investment. Okay, so, um, Again, it's a means of ranking projects. Okay, so if you, this is a method to use if you have alternatives that you're trying to consider or choose between. Okay. Um, okay, the final, well, I think it's the final uh, method to use for capital investments called the time adjusted rate of return. It's actually more commonly known in the business world as the internal rate of return, okay? What this measures is, it, it, it's the calculation is, the point at which the present value of the cash inflows equals the present value of the cash outflows. So it has to be exactly the same, the PV of the inflow, PV of the outflow. What this measures is exactly how much return you're gonna get on the investment. So remember the net present value method? We didn't know exactly how much we we're gonna make. All we knew was we we're gonna make more than the um, cost of capital. This tells us, this internal rate of return method tells us exactly how much more than the cost of capital are we gonna make. This is the most commonly used um, measure of profitability of an investment out there in the real world. Okay, so this is another one, of, besides the NPV, this is um, one that you really will need to know because you will face this in your careers, okay? <clears throat> um, again, we're gonna ignore the way they calculate present values in, um, in the book. We're not using present value tables. Okay, what we're gonna do is, um, and, We'll just go straight to the example. Okay, so this company can purchase a new machine that costs 104322 
it's going to save 20000 a year. So in other words, that's what they're going to be making per year because they're going to save on expenses. This machine has a 10-year life. Okay, what's the internal rate of return on this investment? So how much money are they going to be making on this project? Again, ignore this, and let me just go back to the example, and I'll walk you through <clears throat> the steps on the financial calculator. <clears throat> okay, so using the financial calculator, and again, I'm just going to verbally go through this. So you'll have to kind of follow along. Um, if you're listening now without a kind of calculator in front of you, make sure you go back to this section and to walk through the steps on your own for this process, okay? <clears throat> okay, so the cost of 104,322, we're going to be paying money out right now, right? So that's already at present value. So that's the present value is 104,322. However, because it's purchasing machines, cost is going to be going or cash is going to be going out so that's a negative that's an outflow so you have to type in 104 322 and you have to make that negative and the way to make a number negative on the hp 12c calculator is after you put the number in so 104 322 there's a CHS button on the top row right in the middle. If you hit that button right after you put in the 104,322, you'll see that the screen changes to a negative. Okay, and that, that, that's important when doing this calculation. So your display should now show negative 104,322. Again, negative because the money is going out. Okay, so that's the PV. So when you see negative 104,322, you then hit the PV button, okay. again, on the top row of your calculator. Okay, so now we've input present value. <clears throat> We're going to save 20000 a year. Oh, that's a series of payments of the same amount. So that's 20000 So type in the 20000 And because it's a series of payments, we hit the PMT or payment button. So leave that 20,000 as a positive number, then punch in PMT. Okay, so those are two variables we just put in. We need a third variable. Oh, it says 10 year life. So we know that the life is 10 years. Type 10 and then hit the N number of periods button. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the internal rate of return. Rate of return means interest rate. So just now, just hit the I button. The calculator will say running, running, running. And it'll come up with the answer. Uh, I see 14%. Okay, so the internal rate of return is 14%. In other words, they will be making 14% per year on this investment. Okay. Whether that's good or not depends on what their standard is. If they say, we don't do any investments unless it returns 16% a year to us, then they wouldn't do this because they would only be making 14%. On the other hand, if their goal or their standard is 12%, then they would do it because the 14 that we get from this would be more than our goal of 12%, okay? So anyway, that's the way. So again, the book uses the tables to get the 14%. Forget that, don't use the table, use the financial calculator because that's what you will be doing in the real world. And I almost guarantee you, if you're in the world of business, you're gonna be using a financial calculator. Um, so here's just a comparison of the two most commonly used um, methods for doing capital budgeting, the net present value method and the internal rate of return method. Okay. 
Again, both are acceptable, both are widely used in the real world. Okay. Uh, don't worry so much about this post audit thing. Um, and that basically is the chapter. Okay, the difficulty of this chapter is gonna be the use of the financial calculator. So again, because it's an online class and I can't sit down with you and walk through it together with you, you're gonna have to go through um, YouTube or some other um, video like that, or some other, um, yeah, videos to get um, something that tells you how to use an HP 12C calculator. If you go to YouTube and just um, hit the search uh, in the search box, HP 12C financial calculator, um, you'll get all kinds of uh, YouTube videos on how to use the calculator. So um, I would suggest you do that. I will also post though a link to a suggested um, recording video. Um, but you can use any of the other ones, whatever you find more um, helpful as far as, again, using the HP 12C financial calculator. Okay, um, that's it for chapter 10. You should know all the different techniques for doing capital budgeting, concentrating though on the two most commonly used net present value and internal rate of return. Although, payback period method is used uh, quite often as well because it's so easy to do. But again, net present value, internal rate of return are the more accurate and better ones to use. Okay, um, if you, anybody has any questions about the use of a financial calculator, email me and I can walk you through, um, you know, in words, walk you through the process of using a financial calculator, um, okay? So that's it. Um, let's see. My favorite participant sport. No, I take that. My favorite hobby. Okay. My hobby include playing poker, uh, playing computer games, and um, let's see what I like to do, and um, drinking beer. Yeah. So those are my three favorite pastimes. Okay, so remember that for the uh, weekly quiz. Okay, that's it for um, the lecture on chapter 10. Aloha.